Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG Brazil, and today I will talk about tainted flow analysis. This is a kind of static analysis fairly used in software security. And this class will be good to show the difference between a sparse and a dense data flow analysis. I will start the video with two funny pictures. First, the skunk strip. Go ahead and read it. It's just for fun and had seen it before. You can stop the video and read it over. And then there is this other picture. This is actually fake, but it's funny nevertheless. Anyways, do you understand what's the kind of software attack that these two pictures illustrate? The one before about little Bob table and this one on the car plate. They are making reference to something called tainted flow attack. A tainted flow attack is a kind of information flow attack. These are software exploits that either extract sensitive information from programs or that send harmful data to sensitive program functions. A tainted flow attack is an example in the second category. When an adversary can read sensitive information from a program, we say that the program has an information disclosure vulnerability. When the adversary can send harmful information to the program, then we say that the program has a tainted flow vulnerability. We will illustrate tainted flow attacks with an example. In this example, an adversary can compromise the behavior of a web-based program. The target program is very simple. It's just a PHP server that echoes the name in the URL. You can see how it works in this figure. Now imagine that a user of this program passes the following string as a name in the URL. You might stop the video to read the URL. In this case, the program will generate a web page that prints information about the cookies that a user has stored in its local environment. The fact that the program creates a web page with valid JavaScript code and that this code actually runs is unlikely to be the intention of the developers of our web server. Take a look again in the program. Try to understand why it can produce a page with a valid JavaScript program. And then review cookies from the local environment. Now, can you think about how to make this program safe, or at least safer? Here's a way. We can use functions in the PHP library to treat the input URL as a string escaping all the characters that could be interpreted as valid HTML code. This program now is safe, at least against the kind of attack that we have illustrated before. Now let's look into another example of unsafe program. This is a PHP program that accesses a database using a SQL query. Can we spot any vulnerability on it? Stop the video and read the code over to think about it. The thing is that the variable id is merged with part of a SQL query to produce some string that is valid, that is a valid SQL query. But id can contain anything. Imagine that it contains Bob Table's name that's like here in red. What would happen? So these two kinds of vulnerabilities that we have seen are examples of tainted flow vulnerabilities. A tainted flow attack which exploits this kind of vulnerability is formed by four things. The first, of course, is the program that's the target of the attack. The second component of a tainted flow exploit is a source of malicious information. That's some program input that an adversary can control. In our case, is the get array 
used in PHP to read data from URLs. Then we have also syncs, which are sensitive program sites that consume information. In the case of the first exploit that stole a cookie, the sync was the echo function. And we might have sanitizers, which are operations that clean on information. In this domain, we use these two expressions, clean and tainted. Clean data is data that's safe to be used inside the program. Tainted data is data that an adversary can control. And so we say that's tainted, because the adversary can control it. To know if a program contains a vulnerability, we must try to find a path from the source of tainted information to a sink that does not go through a sanitizer. If this path exists, then we say that the program contains a vulnerability. There are many examples of tainted flow vulnerabilities. I shall provide six examples here. The first is called a cross-site scripting attack. That's the example with the echo function, where we could steal a cookie. You can see examples of source sinks and sanitizers in the yellow box. The program on the top is vulnerable. That's the program that we had already seen as our first example. The program on the bottom is the safe version of it. Another very famous kind of tainted flow attack is SQL injection. In this case, an adversary sends to some database function a query that might harm the database. Again, the program on the top is unsafe, it's vulnerable. The adversary can control the contents of the get array and can build a bad SQL query that will then be passed to the database. On the bottom, we see two sanitizers that we can use to make the program safer here. There is a kind of attack called command execution in which an adversary forces the execution of some command of the operating system in the environment of the target program. So the program on the top is vulnerable. And can you stop the video now and try to find a way to run, say, the command remove star, I mean, remove everything, by manipulating the contents of the get array? The program on the bottom, in turn, is a safer version of the vulnerable program. A fourth type of tainted flow attack is re remote file inclusion. In this case, the adversary forces the inclusion of a malicious file in the web page that a target program produces. You can see an example of a vulnerable program on the top. The include command can add anything, any file to the target web page, including files containing bad scripts, for instance. You can see a better version of this program on the bottom. In this case, the user can choose only from a fixed number of files. Similarly, um, to command execution, we have file system access. In this case, the adversary uses commands from the operating system to have access to files that exist in the local environment where the target program runs. For instance, the unlink command that appears in the program on the top can be used to remove any file from the file system. It's actually easy to protect this program, and we could use the techniques that we saw when talking about remote file inclusion. Another kind of attack that's hard to guard against is malicious evaluation. Most dynamic languages have a kind of eval command that lets the program interpret a string as code, and this interpretation has access to variables stored in the scope where the evaluation happens. You can see a vulnerable program on the top. There is much research about how to guard programs against malicious evaluation, but it's not actually easy to do so, because the code that's evaluated can do anything. It's hard to separate bad from good code in this case. These kinds of vulnerabilities are very common, 
and they cost much money to everybody. For instance, cross-site scripting attacks was the fourth most common kind of attack in the CDE report. That's 20 years of data from 1999 until 2019. And the Kamai report, which tracks mostly tainted flow attacks, put SQL injection as the most common vulnerability of, in servers. That's why there are so many companies that are specialized into making programs safer. You can see some of them in this figure, but of course there are many more and perhaps you can even think about some of them. In the next class, we shall start talking about how to implement analysis to find tainted flow vulnerabilities in programs. Until there, I leave you with a few questions. Try to think about them before we move on. And if you have questions, just drop me an email. Thank you.